And we are back with part two of this week's reading of the Messianic Jewish Family Bible, Tree of Life Version, TLB. And we had just completed the introduction to Isaiah at the end of part one. And I kind of cut that short because this online recorder was actually showing that it was at 39 minutes when in fact it was less than 15 minutes. But that's okay. We will make up for it in this part. Chapter 1, the vision of Isaiah, son of Amos, which he saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem in the days of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah. And this next section is, is called, A Nation Sick with Sin. Listen, heavens, and hear, earth, for Adonai has spoken, sons I have raised and brought up but they have rebelled against me. The ox knows its owner and the donkey its manger, but Israel does not know. My people do not understand. Oi, a sinful nation, a people weighed down with iniquity, offspring of evildoers, sons dealing corruptly. They have abandoned Adonai. They have despised Israel's holy one. They have turned backwards. Where will you be struck again as you stray away more and more? The whole head is sick, the whole heart faint. From the foot to the head, there is no soundness, wounds, bruises, and raw sores, not pressed, nor bandaged, nor softened with oil. Your land is desolate, your cities are burnt with fire, your fields, strangers devour it. In your presence, a desolation overthrown by strangers. So the daughter of Zion is left as a sukkah in a vineyard, as a lodge in a garden of cucumbers, as a besieged city, unless... Adonai, Sava'od, had left us a small remnant, we would have been as Sodom, we would have been as Gomorrah. Hear the words of Adonai, you rulers of Sodom. Give ear to the Torah of our God, you people of Gomorrah. Now, in the footnotes, um, there is a reference to Romans 9, 29 in the New Testament, and it says, and just as Isaiah foretold, unless Adonai Sebaot had left us seed, we would have become like Sodom and resembled Gomorrah. So the next section of chapter one is worthless offerings. And this is the Lord speaking through Isaiah. For what is it to me, the multitude of your sacrifices, says Adonai? I am full of burnt offerings of rams and fat of, of fed animals. I have no delight in the blood of bulls or of lambs or of he goats. When you come to appear before me, who has required this at your hand, trembling, trampling my courts? Bring no more worthless offerings. Incense is an abomination to me. New moon and Shabbat, the calling of convocations. I cannot endure it. Iniquity with solemn assembly. Your new moons and your festivals my soul hates. They are a burden to me. I am weary to bear them. When you spread out your hands, I will hide my eyes from you. When you multiply prayers, I will not hear. Your hands are full of blood. And I'm going to pause here for a moment to... Um, to kind of recap what the Lord is saying. Um, and actually, David had said that um, when he when he was repenting to the Lord, um, also at one point he had mentioned um, coming with a contrite heart and being repentant, it means more to the Lord than all of these offerings. And this is what the Lord is saying through Isaiah as well, years later. Um, and, and Isaiah is delivering it to the people. Like, um, all your ceremonies and your sacrifices are worthless because it's not in your heart. Um, and God does know what's in our hearts. So they, they become more like rituals um, than worshiping from the heart. And I think, you know, we can look at that in today's world um, as well. How does that relate to us today? Are we coming to God with a clean heart, with, with a repentant heart versus just going through the motions. And basically God is saying he's sick of the rituals and, and the, and the ceremony, um, because that's all it is. It, and, and that's really what he's saying. 
The next section is scarlet sins as snow. Wash and make yourselves clean. Put away the evil of your deeds from before my eyes. Cease to do evil. Learn to do good. Seek justice. Relieve the oppressed. Defend the orphan. Plead for the widow. Come now, let us reason together, says Adonai. Though your sins be like scarlet, they will be white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they will become like wool. If you are willing and obey, you will eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you will be devoured with a sword. For the mouth of Adonai has spoken. And we've heard this, you know, our skins are, our, our sins are like scarlet. But through our Savior, Yeshua, and his redemption, they be, we become white as snow. So that's a little hint, a little type and shadow of, of Yeshua in, that, in those verses. Restore the faithful city, how the faithful city became harlot. She once was full of, of justice, righteous. Righteousness lodged in her, but now murderers. Your silver has become dross. And the word dross uh, basically means rubbish or something worthless. So, in, in other words, that, that verse can read your silver has become like rubbish, like something worthless. Your wine diluted by water. Your princes are rebellious and friends with thieves. Everyone loves a bride and chases after rewards. They do not defend the orphan, nor does a widow's case come to them. Therefore, says the Lord Adonai Sabaoth, the mighty one of Israel, Boy, I will get relief from my foes and average and avenge myself on my enemies. Then I will turn my hand on you. Purge away your dross, some your worthlessness, basically, and remove all your alloy. I will restore your judges as at first, your counselors as at the start. Afterward, you will be called city of righteousness, faithful city. Zion will be redeemed with justice, her repentant with righteousness. But there will be a crushing of transgressors and sinners together. Forsaking Adonai, they will be consumed, for they will be ashamed of the sacred oaks that you desired and embarrassed because of the gardens that you have chosen. For you will be like an oak, a withering leaf, like a garden that has no water, so the strong will become tender, and his work like a spark, both will burn together, and no one will quench them. And it sounds a little bit like end times, too, with those lines. Chapter 2, the word which Isaiah, son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem, Torah from Jerusalem. It will come to pass in the last days that the mountains of Adonai's house will stand firm as head of the mountains and will be exalted above the hills, so all nations will flow to it. Then many people will go and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of Adonai, to the house of the God of Jacob. Then he will teach us his ways, and he will, and we will walk in his path. For Torah will go forth from Zion, and the word of Adonai from Jerusalem. He will judge between the nations and decide for many peoples. They will beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning knives. Nation will not lift up sword against nation, nor will they learn war no, anymore. Come, house of Jacob, let us walk in the light of Adonai. For you have forsaken your people, the house of Jacob, for they are filled with soothsayers from the east, and they have clapped hands with the children of foreigners. Their land also is full of silver and gold, nor is there any limit for their treasures. Their land also is full of horses, nor is there any limit to their chariots. Their land also is full of idols. They worship the work of their hands, what their own fingers have made. So humanity bows down as each one lowers himself. Pardon them not. Enter into the rock and hide in the dust in fear of Adonai and the glory of his majesty. Now the beginning part of that when we're talking about the cons concerns the last day and actually the reign of Yeshua when, you, when we're talking about the beginning of, um, of chapter 2. It will come to pass in the last days 
that the mountain of Adonai's house will stand firm as as head of the mountains and will be exalted above the hills. So all will all na- all nations will flow to it. When Yeshua is here, all nations are going to flow to Jerusalem to come and worship the King. So when we read on um, that the Torah will go forth from Zion and people will come to learn from him, uh, it makes me think of Yeshua. This talks about Yeshua and the millennial reign in in a sense. So the last part of chapter 2 is lofty ones brought low. The man of haughty eyes is humbled. The lofty ones brought low. For Adonai alone will be exalted in that day. For the day of Adonai Sabaoth will be against anyone proud and haughty. Against anyone lifted up, he will be humbled. Against all, all, the, all the cedars of Lebanon that are lofty and lifted up. Against all the oaks of Bashan. Against all the high mountains. Against all the exalted hills. Against every high tower. Against every fortified wall. Against all the Tarshish ships. And against all the luxury boats. The pride of man will be humbled. The arrogance of men abased. For Adonai alone will be exalted in that day. So there's a little something in that too. You know, people exalting themselves and exalting themselves above the Lord is something that you don't want to be doing um, because there is only one worthy and that's that's Adonai. Um, The devil found that out as Lucifer. He was full of pride and tried to think he was going to um, take over the kingdom of heaven and even raised up a third of the angels to go against God, the creator, the one who created him. And what he found out is he got kicked out of heaven forever. Uh, sin entered heaven because of him, and he was, was definitely kicked out of heaven for good. The idols will completely pass away. People will go into the caves of the rocks and into the holes of the earth because of the fear of Adonai and the splendor of his majesty when he arises to shake the earth. In that day, a man will cast away the idols in silver and his idols of gold, which they made to worship to the moles and to the bats. They go into the clefts of the rock and the crevices of the crags because of fear of Adonai and the splendor of his majesty when he arises to shake the earth. Stop trusting in mankind whose breath is in his nose for what is he really worth. I'm going to pause here because there's some verses here. It just sounds a lot like like in days um, when people are also idolatrous and um, going to take us actually to the New Testament to First Luke 23, verse 30. And that reads, then they will begin to say to the mountains, fall on us, and to the hills, cover us. And Revelation chapter 6, verses 15 to 16 reads, Then the kings of the earth and the great men and the military commanders and the rich and the mighty and everyone, slave and free, hid themselves in the caves and among the rocks of the mountains. And they tell the mountains and rocks, Fall on us and hide us from the face of the one seated on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. So clearly what we're seeing with, with a lot of Isaiah's passages is and he's speaking of Messiah as well. But this is also, he is also giving warning to the people of his time um, that their kingdom is going to fall and they're, they're, they're going to be running from danger um, that they can't escape. Chapter 3, The Downfall of Jerusalem and Judah. For behold, the the Lord Adonai Sabaoth takes from Jerusalem and from Judah supply and support, every supply of bread and every supply of water, mighty man and man of war, judge and prophet, fortune teller and elder, captain of fifty and man of rank, counselor, crafty magician and cunning charmer. I will set children as their rulers, capricious ones will govern them. The people will oppress one another, each one by his fellow, each one by his neighbor. The child will be insolent to the aged and dishonorable to the honorable. When a man takes hold of his brother in the house of his father, saying, You have a cloak, you be our ruler. This ruin 
is under your charge. In that day, he will protest, saying, I am no healer, and my house is no bread or cloak. Don't make me a ruler of people. For Jerusalem has stumbled, and Judah is fallen, for their tongue and their actions are against Adonai, defying the eyes of his glory. The expression of their faces bears witness against them. They display their sin like Sodom. They do not hide it. Boy, their souls, for they brought evil on themselves. And the next part of chapter 3 is the judge arises. Say to the righteous, he will be well, eating the fruit of their deeds. Boy, the wicked, it will be bad for him, for the dealing of his hands will be done to him. My people, children are their oppressors, and women roll over them. My people, your guides mislead you and destroy the way of your paths. Adonai arises to contend a case and to stand and judge the people. Adonai will enter into judgment with the elders of his people and with the princes. You have devoured, you have devoured the vineyard. The plunder of the poor is in your houses. What do you mean by crushing my people and grinding the face of the poor? Says Adonai, Elohai, to the oaks. Moreover, Adonai says, since the daughters of Zion are proud and walk with outstretched necks and seductive eyes, walking and mincing as they go, making a jingling with their feet, therefore Adonai will smite with a scab the forehead of the daughters of Zion. Adonai will expose their secret parts. In that day, Adonai will strip the finery of anklets, headbands, crescents, pendants and bracelets, veils, headdresses, armlets, sashes, perfume vials, amulets, rings and nose jewels, vessel robes, capes, cloaks, purses, lace scarves, fine linen, turbans, and veils. Now it will come to pass, instead of sweet spices, there will be rottenness instead of a sash, rags instead of curled hair, baldness instead of, um, instead of curled hair, baldness, Instead of fine clothing, sackcloth, and branding instead of beauty, your men will fall by the sword, and your warriors in battle. Your, her gates will lament and mourn. Desolate, she will sit on the ground. Now I want to bring um, a Adonai Elohai Seva Oat. I'm going to bring to your attention what... Um, that means, um, when we're saying Adonai Elohai Sebaot, it means the Lord God of hosts. And we've heard the term Adonai Eloheinu, that's the Lord our God. But in this, in this verse, it's the Lord God of hosts. Okay. Chapter 4. Seven women will grab hold of one man in that day, saying, We will eat our own bread and wear our own apparel. Only let us be called by your name. Take away our reproach. Zion's end time glory. In that day, the branch of Adonai will be beautiful and glorious, and the fruit of the land excellent and appealing for Israel's survivors. So it will come to pass that whoever is left in Zion and whoever remains in Jerusalem will be called holy. Everyone who is recorded among the living in Jerusalem, after Adonai has washed away the filth of the daughters of Zion and has purged the blood of Jerusalem from her midst by the spirit of judgment and by the spirit of burning, of burning, then Adonai will create over the whole area of Mount Zion and over her convocations a cloud by day and smoke and shining a, a flaming fire by night. For over all, Glory will be a canopy. Then there will be a sukkah for sure by day from the heat and for refuge and for shelter from storm and from rain. And that's the end of chapter four. And I just want to mention here too, um, as as we're looking here, um, and and we're focused on chapters one through twenty, um, the judgment of Judah and Jerusalem. Um, for Isaiah's time was addressed here, and the judgment of the nations comes in Isaiah 13 to 27. So we're, and we're covering all of that um, today.
Chapter 5, Song of the Vineyard. Let me sing of my beloved, a song of my beloved about his vineyard. My beloved had a vineyard in a very fertile field. He dug it out and cleared its stones, planted it with a clear, with a choice vine, built a tower in the midst of it, and even cut out a wine press. He expected it to yield good grapes, but it yielded worthless grapes. So now, O oh, inhabitants of Jerusalem, and people of Judah, please judge between me and my vineyard. What more was there to do for my vineyard that I had not done? Why then, when I expected it to yield good grapes, did it yield worthless grapes? So now I will make known to you what I will do to my vineyard. I will take away the hedge, and it will be eaten up. I will break down the fence, and it will be trodden down. I will lay it waste. It will not be pruned or hoed. The briars and thorns will come up. I will also command the clouds not to rain on it. For the vineyard of Adonai Sabaoth is the house of Israel, and the people of Judah, the planting of his delight. He looked for justice, but behold, bloodshed for righteousness, but behold, a cry. So also, you know, when we look at this, you know, the Lord is saying, I will take away the hedge. The hedge that, when, when you think about the hedge of protection that is around God's people, uh, taking away the hedge um, opens up to not being protected, is what he's saying here as well. Judgment for injustice. And I'm going to pause it at this point and come back with part three and begin with the last part of chapter. Five, judgment for injustice.